we have been studying together King David's life. Luili lo to lu oli no je pe yen ke wo ke cha wan zu da vi lu neng. Ni lu neng o ni yan jing to wan chi. In particular, we have been looking at David's faithfulness to God. This morning, we're going to continue our journey in looking at what it means, what it looks like to be faithful to God. And King David, in all of the Bible, when it comes to King David, the Bible makes it very, very clear that he was a faithful man, one after. God. What is faithfulness to God? A few weeks ago, we learned that faithfulness to God is genuine repentance. The week before that, we also learned that faithfulness to God is trusting God in the darkest moments of time. This morning. I want to expand and look more towards what this faithfulness looks like. What is faithfulness to God? Faithfulness to God is having a heart after God. Let me say that again. When it comes to faithfulness, what is that? Faithfulness to God, it is having a heart after God. Today we're going to learn about this biblical truth, what it looks like to have a heart after God. You see, the Bible makes it so clear that King David, he himself. The Lord God said that King David's heart, he had a heart after God. We see this many times in the Bible. In Acts chapter 13, verse 22, this is what God have inspired Luke to say about King David. Let's read it together. After he had removed him, King Saul, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he has testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. ตอลุอิลุอิลิทอลอนอเปลาชัยซอวันซือดาวิลุนิงเปลาชัยที่ลอกเกอโอเคให้เตลุนิงจันจิงโตตูชื่อจงลิจาอันนี้มวนตอย
Because faithfulness to God is having a heart after God. Characteristic number one. A heart after God is one who completely trusts in God's way. Ya iranchi. Lucia or board of anchu na ya. Lucia or nyoto nyoje de vanchu ya Lucia litya. Ka iya lina. Ya Lucia or chato to cha to ya ipo cha ya to vanchu. Psalms 27 verse 1 teaches this truth. Let me show us. This is David writing. And this is what David says. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom should I dread? These are words coming from David's heart that expresses complete trust. Faithfulness to God is having a heart after God. So what does a heart after God look like? It is one that has complete trust in the ways of God. And Lucia expressly, Lucia, Lucia, or Jot out to Jatsoya, Ipo Jaya, Dow Vanchu. Why did David write this? What caused David to be in a position or in a posture of trust? What was it? This is what it was. You see, David was running away from his enemy, King Saul. If you know anything about the narrative of David, King Saul loved David in the beginning. Jealousy. David what transpired? King Saul went after King David. There was a point in David's life where he ran away, he ran everywhere, and wherever he ran, Saul was after him. Saul's army was before King David. King David did not know what to do. That is why he writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom should I dread? This is what it means. A heart after God is one that has complete trust in God. A lot of times when it comes to trusting God, we like to gamble with God. God. We like to give God options. As long as God fulfills our options, then we're okay with God. That's often the way how we in Western society trust people, trust God, trust others. Well, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. 
If you put in a little bit of skin in the game, then I will put in a little bit of skin in the game, right? God's not asking for a little bit of skin. God's asking for your entire heart. That's what David is expressing here. ยองกุลิเปเพ่งเนี่ยอัวเอ่อตุเจียวบอนดอวันจื้อน่ะยองแกมโบดอวันจื้อน่ะเปมัวเปเฟ่งจอตอโหเจวันจื้อตุอัว
Characteristic number two. A heart after God is one that gives credit to God. We have just heard that it is one that trusts God. The second characteristic is one that gives credit to God. Psalms 1 teaches this truth. David writes, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. David writes that having a heart after God is one that gives credit to God. David writes this right after as he's reflecting upon the death of Goliath. In David's life, he had to fight the giant Goliath. And he took down Goliath with one rock, one slingshot, one small rock into Goliath's head, and it knocked down the giant. David could have said, I did that. He could have took full credit. Everything could have been his. Especially when Yatuta is saying, Yonder Ishan, the Elopo Davi. When they saw David bring down the giant Goliath, they praised David. Doying itu giant. He could have said, I did it. I was the one. But what does David do? No. David said, God was with us. God was with me. He gave credit to God. The heart after God is one that gives credit. To God, not to mankind. I think as pastors, this is a huge conundrum that we battle and we struggle the most with. The tension is so real and true. Why? Because if we are not careful, we will say that I am David and I defeated the Philistines. I am pastor, and we have done X, Y, and Z, and that's why our church is healthy. That is a conundrum that leaders and pastors could usually have. A heart after God is one that gives credit where it is due. One that trusts God. Characteristic number three. A heart after God is one that is teachable. 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 Or more credit, la she Lucia or Kua Vanchu, Chia Lucia or Kua Nitu King, Ya Bayarachi, Lucia or Nyonge Vanchi, Ya Lucia or Lutu Kiato Nu. A heart after God is one that is teachable. Psalms 119, verse 33a says this. David writes, 
Teach me the way of your statutes, Lord. Pomonghalina, pomdango, chong ipo ko chua ngai pe chua pe e halina. Tu chu, thok he ko te ke chai lun jie to ku. Wow. Wow. Teach me the way of your statutes, Lord. You see, the heart that David had was that even though when he was king, he was always learning from other individual people. Lu xie o wan zu da wei mo ma ya li na na. Nu tu ya wan zu le lo, nu ying cheng ka ge. De jia tu ma tu ke lu ning. Teachable heart. What does this look like? This is what it looks like. There's a young man, and he just finished his PhD in psychology. He had just finished his PhD in counseling clinical psychology. He graduated from Ivy League school, Brown University, and he attend a conference. All the scholars of psychology every year attends this conference, and so he had just finished his PhD, and he decides to attend the conference with Yatu Zhengjie or the psychology, the Dao Xixie, Muzha Doctor level, it jiao man mo double doctor degree, it jiao man mo honorary doctor degree, le yao jiao wo top of the class in the nation of United States. And so he goes there, and the guest, one of the guests that attended the conference, he was finishing his four-year degree at the local university, and it sparked interest to him. So that other young man entered as a guest, and so the PhD doctor young man and the bachelor level university young man got together and got to know each other and developed a relationship within that week of conference. And there were many things that the young man from the local university had said that the PhD elderly man or Older brother learned from, even though they specialized in the same field, in the same educational background. He learned a lot from the local college student. To be teachable looks like this. Let me stretch us even further. Faithfulness to God is having a heart after God, and one characteristic is to be teachable. A characteristic of the kind of heart is to be teachable. What what does that look like for you, for me? I think do pe jia o pao lao na ya. There are a lot of things pe jia lao can really learn from pe jia luo. As I age and as I get older, when my son asks me to do something with them, I always say, "You don't know, son. You know, ah, let me do it for you, right?" There was this one time I came home uh, from uh, lunch for lunch, and uh, Owen was already out of school early, early dismissal day. And uh, his, you know, my wife was in the kitchen cooking, and so Owen took me to the room. And Owen wanted to show me 
what he drew on a piece of paper. He drew a heart, and then he drew a few things inside the heart. And on the heart, it said, Mommy, right? It was, I think, right before last week or one of those days. And Owen was teaching me how to love my wife. He reminded me about my love for my wife. I could have just said, eh, right? I could have just brushed it off, right? He showed me this heart that he drew, and he put mommy in the center of there. Daddy wasn't in there, so I couldn't. I couldn't say, but it said mommy in there, right? He was teaching me, reminding me to love my wife. I think that if I'm too high on my horse, then I probably would not respond properly to to my son. One that is teachable, even from the little children, little kids. Fourth characteristic. A heart after God is one that is loyal. Loyal. Yang plow ya ranchi. Lucia on yon jayvan chu ya ilusia jongli ya. Ya ilusia on yan yang do tu chu. Loyalty. Verse 33b teaches this truth. Kai pet your pain be hali no. And I shall comply with it. To the end. I love Pomong 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 Halina. Pomong Halina. Go your near new water, little gate giant. I bet your baby. Long key, man, I did with it to the end. Long monghatia, waterly, near new water, little gate giant. Wow. Verse 34 B teaches this truth. Verse 34 What is loyalty? Loyalty requires a time span. What loyalty requires from you is to the end. The other day, my wife and I were cleaning the house. She had pulled out her yearbook, and we were going through the yearbook. I couldn't find my yearbook, high school yearbook. And I looked at some of my wife's friends that she was sharing and showing me in the yearbook. And I had asked her a question and she responded back. I could tell she was loyal, loyal to the alma mater that she graduated Merced, hi. Is that right, honey? Merced, hi. She's loyal to the institution that she graduated from. And that's why she took out her high school yearbook. She graduated 2006, so that must have been 15 years, almost 14 years maybe, right? And I looked over it with her. I was just demonstrating what loyalty to a spouse would look like. But then I realized how important loyalty to Jesus is like. A heart after God is one that is loyal to Jesus to the end. Lucia on Bovan Chu, Lucia on Yan Yang Totu Chu, Mutsa no Sao. Mutsa no Sao. Loyalty, Naya. 
I cannot find a Hmong word that can describe loyalty in the way how King David describes it. I think in my lot, Yan Yang Mu Tato, Lucy her soul, she girl. We live in a day and an age where we young people don't think about death. We middle aged life group don't really think about death, but every now and then it's a reality check. But to pay your then death is always on our mind. Because we know our time is short. There was an elderly man that I spoke to recently, and he had said this to me I don't know what I would do if my spouse passed away. He's in his 70s, and he said that to me. When he said that to me, the word urgency came up to my mind. You see, loyalty is being urgent even to death do part. I wonder why this elderly said that to me. We had a brief conversation and then I went home. I believe the elderly man said that to me was because he was loyal to his wife. I shall comply with it to the end. Comply of what? The commands of God to the end. That is what a loyal heart looks like. Lucia on Yan Yang to Chu Yongli no Yaluno Yan Chi. The last characteristic, characteristic number five. A heart after God is not only one that is loyal, not only one that is teachable, not only one that is trusting God, not only one that is helpful but gives credit to God, but is one that also is obedient to God. Lucia onyaje van chia Lucia jonglicha Lu o mlong lu Verse 34 phong dan go chong ipo ko chua kai pe cho plao hai li na This is what verse 34 says Give me understanding so I may comply with your law and keep it with all my heart ผมมองมาเนี่ยนะทอเคกอกูเต้าเต้าก็ได้เกจใจกูยอดจ่อได้เกจใจเด้อก็เกเชกันจือดาวีฮะตูโชคนะขอดาวีเคตันเด้อน
so that I may comply with your law and keep it with all my heart. What does obedience look like in the 21st century today? I don't know if obedience is even a vocabulary in today's language. Jongoli King David wrote this in Psalms 119, verse 34. What might have been going on in David's life? Comply with your law and keep it with all your heart. You see, David was king. So a problem that kings had during David's time was that David was exposed to many other kingdoms along with the princes of those kingdoms. <laughs> You create alliance, the banana, the country, the land, the sea, the hotai, the more the tai, pitua, do you, you got you more alliance. The problem that David had was this. But you know what the deeper problem was? The deeper problem that David had difficulty was this. That as David formed alliance with other countries, being in marriage to other princes, came along with their belief, their religion. Go. What happened to David? There is a Mexican saying, the husband may be the head, but the wife is the neck. The Hispanic saying is this, Wherever the neck turns, the head turns. Oh, I wonder why the brothers and sisters from uh, Mexico have that terminology, right? They would say the head may be the head, the, the, the father may be the head, but I am the neck. Wherever I turn the head, the head turns, right? That's an interesting saying. ไทตอลฮัตเตอร์ขอโอดาวีมัวขอเตมิงโอดาวีมัวมาเยอะทอแล้วมัวแล้วตุนไทตอลดาวีไอ้ก็มัวเกชิโตจองมาเยอะดา
David Chimnong Lu Ya David Olindal. The heart after God is one that is obedient. That's what David faced. What do you and I face today? I think on a national level, you and I have challenges with the leaders, particularly national level, United States. If you guys have been paying attention to the news, World War III may come sooner than we think it to be. I know we're young and we don't think that it's possible to have another war. But as I'm reading the signs of the age, it seems as though we are heading towards a war with another country. And I think you and I as Christians, one national level or one national challenge that we're going to have is do we say yes to God or do we say yes? To man? Do we agree with an unjust war or do we agree with Yahweh, with God? I think that's one way to see how Game Long Lu obedient looks like. But we are citizens of the United States. We have the right to vote. We are following the rules. We are following the guidelines. We are following the regulations. We are following our democratic ideals. We are following our Republican ideals. True. But I kind of wonder what happens when we are challenged to raise our Christian morality and values above the nation. I wonder what that will be like. I would like to share a challenge that I am personally going through. Could you share call or could struggle, hey? Right. Am I going to side with the Democratic or am I going to side with the Republicans? Or do I just vote absent? Right. That's hard to say. Very difficult, very challenging. Because we live in a day and age where the world wants us to conform. And if we're not careful, our heart is not after God, but our heart will be after what the world has declared to be true. Give me understanding so that I may comply with your law and keep it with all my heart. October, November law ma ballot vote. you say to tofu you share you say to tofu chati no la jongo li chi ya to li van chi zao lu you ku ha chi say to tofu cha la jongo li you chi wo xie lo to van chi ha ti tu tu la van chi yin cheng shi tao you decide to chi vote ge li right you decide to not vote at all either right faithfulness to god is having a heart after god the heart that is after God is the kind of heart that trusts God in all kinds of circumstances, gives credit to God, is teachable, is loyal, is obedient. 
to Jesus. David, labeled as a man after my own heart. This morning, this truth should penetrate our hearts. The reason why I say that is, it's not exhaustive, it's not a list, but these are some of the framework of what a heart after God looks like. Lord, we come before you and we read David's words in the Psalms. The heart that is after you is one that is obedient, one that trusts completely, one that is teachable, one that gives credit to you, one that is loyal above all things. This kind of heart, Lord, help us to take possession of it. Help us to possess a heart that is after you alone, Jesus. May your word be true. In Jesus' name, amen.